Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have Few Game 2 in a best of 3 between Chicken Jew and Gonzo and this is round 2, lower bracket of Chicken Jew's European tournament. So in the first game we saw Chicken Jew lose out to Gonzo's second panzer. Chicken Jew was playing with his 15th infantry Scots and it didn't really work out very well. Couldn't use the heavy armour to his advantage throughout that game. He did manage to clean up the Panzer 4s quite well, but Gonzo just found a way to continuously be aggressive and kind of nullify the amount of kills that Chicken Jew got early on. So in this one, I'd like to see Chicken Jew be a bit more aggressive, maybe take the second armoured French division that he's playing, and uh, try and make a very strong push in phase A. I feel like he, there's a possibility he could do so. This is Bois de la Mort. And Gonzo is going to be playing the 91st Luftlander against that second armoured French. So we're going to be probably seeing a lot of contention up in this forest area for sure. We'll have to see what sort of forces Gonzo puts down in order to cater for this sort of combat against Chicken Jew. Now Chicken Jew will have things like Pioneers. Um, he'll have Nueve. There'll be like Voltages. Those aren't like spectacular at fighting at close range. The Pioneers are okay because the six man napalm squads but other than that he doesn't really have too much to combat close quarters which could be a problem however what he can do is really exploit the bottom side of the map with something like a Stuart push uh, accompanied by mortars or something break through the AT guns and push through on that bottom side on the side of Gonzo it is going to be all about putting the pressure on up here he has the Falschim Jaegers um, he will have Erzatz Troopen, which he can spam there. Let's see what else he's put down. Uh, he's going to be bringing in some Falschim Flammenwerfers as well. There's the Panzerabwehr squad, and he's also got the Command squad in there as well. So, yeah, plenty of infantry options for Gonzo. And it looks like, yeah, he's going to go for Falschim Jaegers accompanied by Falschim Flammenwerfers. And that's going to be a pretty strong push as long as he keeps those flamethrowers well supported because they can die very quickly and for the cost, you know, it, they can definitely not pay themselves off sometimes. So anyway, um, if Chicken Dew loses this one, he will be knocked out of the tournament. Gonzo, if he wins, um, will be moving on to the next round. Uh, if vice versa, it, basically what happens is um, Chicken Jew will have to play another game and win that one as well if he wants to continue. So Chicken Jew's really got an uphill climb now, but he has to make an impact in this game if he wants to stay in the tournament. Let's have a look at more specifically what's going down. So we've got two units of Falschim Jaegers, three units of Erzatz, two Falschim Flammenwerfers. We've got Pack 36s, I think they are. And then they've got the Falschim Panzer Abwehr and Command Infantry. In the mid, it's going to be probably another squad of Falschim Panzer Abwehr, or maybe just some speed troop or something. Three more Ersatz for the bottom side, accompanied by a Command and a Pack 40, probably in that Opal Blitz. On the side of Chicken Dew, he is going to be bringing in an M8 Spy to the bottom side with some recon, AT gun there as well. M5 half track with voltages. There's a command squad heading towards the middle of the map, accompanied by the M5A1 half track, which has Nueve. On the top side, Nueve with the command M3A3. There's also the WC52 with the pioneers and the Jeep MMG uh, with the recon. So let's have a look at how Gonzo is deploying here. Oh, he's got to be very careful that this unloaded position command doesn't catch him out. I feel like that could definitely happen. The machine guns could open up onto all of these troop carriers and leave a lot of his infantry exposed, especially to something like an M3A3. They could obliterate squads with its 30 cows at close range. On this bottom side, the uh, spy here, they are going to be spotting any units that come into these tree lines. But one thing that is interesting about this map and something that will favor Gonzo is he can place Urzats like here and there's not much of a chance that Chicken Jew's units will threaten him because of this stream. Vehicles aren't going to be able to cross. Seems like the Jeep went down here. 
to the Pack 36, and we can see an engagement between the M5A1 half track and the Pack 36. But that Pack 36 gonna get pinned down by the looks of things pretty easily. Two star M5A1 with the 50 cal there does a lot of damage. WC52 also trying to open up, but has to be very careful about this engagement. The Fulshimig is here. Three star veterancy with the MG34s can kill a WC52 quite easily because it is unarmored. So if those Fulshimigas get another volley off, we might very well see that WC52 go down, and yes we do. Jeep is coming in with a mortar support on the top side. On the bottom side, things are yeah, pretty quiet. As that's Troop and R pushing up for Gonzo, and Gonzo has found himself a plus one with 52% territory lead early on. The Nueva here are engaging the Urzatz Troopen. They're also now engaging the Pack 36, doing quite a lot of damage to that. But here comes the Fulshin Flammenwerfer, going to be engaging the Nueva. The Nueva at close range do have 10 HE, so they did just demolish that Fulshin Flammenwerfer squad. Didn't take too many too much damage in the process. Now the M5A1s. Just going to be zooming over here to get a shot onto the pack 36. Fulsham Panzer Abwehr, I think, was trying to get a Panzer track on target, but another Flammenwerfer over here. Oh, that's going to cause a surrender, surely. Yeah, that Nueve is going to surrender if it runs into a range. Yeah, it did. So, one pack 36 gone, but that M5A1 is now bailed. This pack 36 will clean that up. Not having any infantry command on this top side was absolutely tragic there. Has allowed Gonzo to break through quite convincingly. But we now have a command infantry unit on the way with this uh, Pioneer. We'll have to see if the Pioneer can be unloaded before the Fulsham Panzer Abwehr gets a shot with its Panzerschreck. Over here it looks like the Ersatz Truppen have been surrounded. Pioneers cut them off as they were making ground. And a lot of the concentration of fighting at the moment has been on this top side. M5A1 is pushing into the mid though, supporting the Nueva here, but uh, Gonzo is responding to that with an AT gun, so that's quite interesting to see for sure. M5A1 still in trouble there, not going to be getting out of that position anytime soon. Gonzo's now coming up with more Volshimi, I guess, but gets them killed. That is a 45 point squad one shot by the M3A3. Very nice indeed. Pack 36. That is going to continue to fire at the M5A1. Looks like the... Oh no, it happened. It actually happened. The Pioneers did get killed by the Fulshin Pans Abwehr here by the looks of things. So the Pioneers went, squad won't get down for free. M5A1 gets cleaned up. 81mm mortar going to be trying to hit these Pack 36s. Voltages here also going to get taken down though as they are standing in the open up here in front of these Pans Abwehr. They're putting up a decent fight with their HE at close range, but they are going to get killed off. Killed off. And uh, the M3A3 there's also gone down to this pack 36. Things are really not falling into place for Chicken Dew up here. However, he does have an opportunity to make some ground in the middle as long as this pack 36 doesn't spoil his day. So Chicken Dew has found himself the plus one at the moment. He's just got to get damage control on this top side. M8 Spy engaging the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr. They're really not getting pinned down very easily, are they? And now with the Trax wheels damaged, the M8 Spy is going to try and fall back. Does manage to get out of range of that infantry squad. Pioneers here clean up one unit of Fulshin Megas. That's actually a really good trade for the Pioneers. If they can take out the Fulshin Fjord as well, that would have been fantastic, but did not happen. And on this bottom side, well, things continuing to fall into favour of Gonzo. His top side here is just, oh, the WC-52 going down there. He needs to keep those at range, Chicken Dew, in order to make full use of that 50 cal. And it's a shame that's the second WC-52 being shot by the Fulshin Panzer out there. I didn't see if there was a, another Pioneer squad in there. I'm assuming this was the Pioneer squad that it dropped off. So that's reasonable, but still, this is not good for... Chicken Dew right here. He's definitely taken a lot of losses on this top side. And this Pack 36 has managed to clean up both of these half track. That's going to leave the Nueve and the Command Squad here surrounded. At long range, the Nueve can kill Erzatz Troop, and sure. But the Fulshimigas, they work best at 300 meter range. And the Nueve won't be able to match up to the HE that the Fulshimigas can put down. 
Also, they've just been pinned at long range here because of the MG34. Now, fortunately, the voltages are there to stop them surrendering. So that's something. But he can't really fall back because he's surrounded. So that sucks really bad. He will end up just getting his unit surrendered. And that's not what you want to see. So M5 half track here has also been surrounded. Pioneers have found themselves surrounded on the top side. These Fulshin Panzer Abwehr squads have been doing a ton of damage throughout this game so far. Pack 36 now engaging again as well. M5 half track is going to go down. So, plus two in favour of Gonzo. He is pushing very heavily with his infantry early on. This is a masterclass of how to use the 91st Luftlander infantry. Erzatz Truppen supporting Fulschmiger, supporting Fulschen Panzer Abwehr. Got the Fulschen Fjöller there, of course, for command. And these Fulschen Flammenwerfers have been leading the charge. Probably not the best move for that Fulschen Flammenwerfer, but uh, they have been finding important kills. Recon Squad does go down there, which is going to stop giving information to Chicken Dew. Now Chicken Dew's just got to find some kills with the Pioneers, but as he moves into the open here, he's going to be engaged by the Urzas Truppen, and that's actually going to hold these Pioneers at a range that they don't really want to engage in. So I'm hoping that Chicken Dew just charges them down. He will take some damage in the process, but it's well worth doing. And Nueve and uh, Voltages did make it back to friendly territory, so they are going to be able to continue these engagements and continue to fall back if they have to. But things aren't really going very well. The Fulshimegas are definitely overrunning the French infantry. I would like to see possibly more Stuarts, but they just aren't really working out. Voltages here, though, did kill off the uh, the Fulshimfjörder, so any pins from now on onto Gonzo's infantry will lead to surrenders. But with his mortar being killed there, there isn't much that he can use to pin down this infantry other than his own infantry, which doesn't really work when, you're, when your opponent's infantry kind of outclasses your own. Oh, another half-track going to fall to the Fulshim Panzer Abwehr. Oh, those things are just so good sometimes, and Gonzo has just been making perfect use of them. This infantry engagement in the middle has just fallen completely in favour of Gonzo. Voltages are getting massacred. That one guy has taken a lot of shots from those Urzats. Fortunately, not very accurate, but uh, eventually died. M5A1 could have honestly kept the engagement up with the Pack 36 there. It's not a massive chance that Pack 36 is going to penetrate, and it's only going to take one more shot from Chicken Dew in order to find the kill on that AT gun. But M16s is going to be the answer to Chicken Dew's problems, apparently. He's bringing in a lot of those to support himself against the infantry. M5A1 going to be trying to take care of this Pack 36. Can he find the kill? Not sure if this Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is going to spoil his day. Not quite. Okay, so M5A1 is going to be falling back. It depends if it falls back towards these Urzats. That could be very bad news for Chicken Dew. Okay, they've recovered again, but the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr, they have another shot. And that's going to be a critical ammo explosion onto the Stuart there. Chicken Dew really, really struggling with uh, Gonzo's aggression here. But it's a different style of aggression, and it's very nice to see Gonzo be able to do it even with an infantry-based division. Very, very interesting. Just super aggressive. Brought in the AT guns that he needed to kill off the half-tracks and the Stuarts early on. I feel like going into this matchup, Gonzo just knew it very well and knew exactly what he would need in order to take on the infantry and vehicles and tanks that Chicken Dew had in order to win this forest area so convincingly on this map. Now these Fulshin Panzer Abwehr, if the Voltages can kill them that would be fantastic because he doesn't want them to kill his uh, M16. If it does that would be kind of devastating. Chicken Dew has noticed that the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr is heading towards him so we'll be able to back away from that which is nice. But still having the Fulshin Panzer Abwehr in that dodgy position without an easy way to spot them at the moment is hard to work around. So Chicken Dew is holding on, but uh, Gonzo is counting up the points right now. 14 minutes and 30 seconds until victory. 
on this bottom side. Gonzo decides to bring in the Befell Panzer III, but that hasn't worked out well for him so far. 57mm gun has managed to get the track wheel damage. But look at this infantry on the top side. The disparity of units here is incredible. Gonzo is going to just continue to push forwards with as many units as he can. He's got a lot of attack moves going here. Going to have to be a little bit careful with these force units just using a normal uh, move command because what's going to happen is if they bump into the sappers they'll just die because they won't stop to fire they will just get killed <laughs> but sappers is a nice sort of reply here from chicken G moving into phase B to clean up some of this infantry but it's really up to him to find the 100 meter range because otherwise what's going to happen is Gonzo is going to be able to engage at his 300 meter range and that's going to do tons of damage. On the bottom side, it's two M5A1s, two M16s, and there's also an M4A2 in there. Those Erzats are very dead. Pack 40 has been pinned down on the back side, and it looks like this M16 is really going hard. But Erlig may be able to get a kill here, and wow, nice shot from the M4A2 there to take out the Marder 2. Maybe Chicken Jew has a chance to come back into this. However, Gonzo is out and about with his HS129B3. It's going to get the engine destroyed onto the M16. Does find the kill. Very nice indeed. Manages to pin down the M5A1 in the process. So he takes out an AA vehicle there with his HS129. And that's kind of what he needs to do. Just sort of pick off these AA. And then he can continue to use the HS129s to shoot at vehicles because generally the 91st Luftland doesn't have a hard time of maintaining air superiority especially against like the French for example so you know having that HS129 come in was actually a really really good strike but Afsadin has been found for Chicken G and he's managed to cancel the plus two that Gonzo had so delaying this game for now Bolshemegas though, look at that. So much damage at that range. They can use their FG42s, their Gewehr 43s, and the MG34 all on target at the same time. And that's like just the perfect situation for those Bolshemegas. Like, basically what Gonzo can do now in this forest is he doesn't even need to continue to be aggressive. As long as he maintains this like gap between the roads, his Volshemiga should cut down any units that Chicken Dew tries to use to take back ground, which he needs to do. He can focus on this bottom side. It looks like he's brought in the Spitfire Mark 9 there to bring in the bomb onto the Pack 40. He didn't quite manage to pin down the Befell Panzer 3, but maybe if he unloads this infantry close enough, they can get some grenades that will do that. Oh, he did find the surrender. Okay. Never mind. It didn't. Did they say it was pinned down? I, I don't even know. Maybe I was just seeing things. This M5A1 is currently on a fire position command, but going to be cancelled since the Pack 40 and the Panzer 3 are dead. Taking out these Erzatz Truppen will open up even more ground for Chicken G. So, this continued aggression on the bottom side is exactly what I want to see out of Chicken G. He needs to make as much ground as he can, as quickly as he can, because all the while a plus one is ticking in favour of Gonzo, and although it looks like uh, Chicken Dew's made a lot of ground down here, the 50-50 along the rest of the uh, map is completely in favour of Gonzo, and now Gonzo's even going in with his uh, pioneers. So they're going to be able to directly take on the sappers, and if he manages to take out the sappers, then he can take more ground. So we'll have to wait and see if that works out for Gonzo. Or if Chicken Dew can hold him back with his own sappers. So there is now an AT gun rolling down to this bottom side. I think uh, Chicken Dew spotted this Marder 2 and thought that, that an AT gun would be an easy way to take care of that. The Pioneer is also coming down to the bottom side just to delay this push coming out of Chicken G. And every time more forces arrive and stop this M4A2 from pushing up, it's not very good for Gonzo at all. Okay, these are actually Grenadiers instead of 
pioneers, but still. We'll have to wait and see if Chicken Dew can get through these before they find any cover. I'm surprised these M5A1s are being so neglected back here, as they would be very useful for annihilating these squads right now. If you kept it out of line of sight of the Marder 2, whilst also engaging the Grenadiers, that would be perfect. However, on this top side, it looks like the Pioneers did win the engagement against the Sappers. These Pioneers have managed to blow up one of the half-tracks as well. This half-track, or this Pioneer squad, however, is getting very low on health, but the Bolshan Panzer Abwehr are there with pretty much full, arm full ammo, so they are going to be able to pick up more half-track kills. That's two down. Can the Fulsion Panzer Abwehr find the third? If he does, this Voltager squad, Command Voltager, is going to be a very bad spot. But here comes the Spitfire Mark 9. That's going to be trying to pin the Marder 2 as Chicken Dew goes for an engagement. But he needs to be extremely careful of these Grenadiers. Panzerfaust are his worst enemy right now, and so are Panzerstrex. Those AT weapons that the infantry have on the side of the 91st Lifthander have been devastating. Grenadier is going to open up with its machine gun. I was thought they might be opening up with a Panzerfaust there, but not quite. Spitfire continuing the engagement onto the Marder 2. Ideally, if you want to pin down a Marder 2 like that, you should strafe it in the rear armor. But either way, ME109 G6 has come in from Gonzo, gets onto the back of the Spitfire and shoots it down. Now, Gonzo's HS129 is free to open up onto these tanks with no AA in the way the HS129 is pretty much free to find any target it likes ME109 G6 R6 going to be focusing on the Spitfire as the Spitfire goes for the HS129 kill looks like the Spitfire might find it unless the BF109 can force it to fall back it has and these ME109 G6R6s are very good indeed. There's also Spitfire Mark 9. Is that going to go down as well? Oh, that's just absolutely devastating for, for Chicken Chew. He's lost both of his Spitfires. He lost the Bomber Spitfire. And this ME109 managed to get out alive. And so did the HS129. So Chicken Chew not even trading in the air there. And this is the phase coming up very shortly where Chicken Chew's sort of strength really falls off because he's only getting 110 points per minute at the moment he's only going to get 115 in phase c compared to gonzo's 130 and gonzo is going to have air superiority moving into that later phase he hasn't really lost a plane yet so there's going to be plenty of hs129s and as you can see on this top side the pioneers have swept through cleaned out anything in their way and now gonzo is taking up position on the edge of the forest now there is always the possibility that you sort of seed the forest at the start of the game and sort of push all of your forces into this bottom side push, but it just hasn't seemed to have worked out for Chicken Jew. He did lose one of his M5A1s down here to that HS129 strike. Um, M4A2 and the M5A1 though, they should be able to continue pushing. It's just the fact that Gonzo even controls the center. And that's mainly due to this stream. His infantry just able to outclass Chicken Jews at range. These voltages with the uh, like the MITR ones are actually pretty nice. They have uh, two 30 cows, which can pin down and do a lot of damage at range. Almost similar to the Volschmjägers, but the Volschmjägers just still win due to all of their weapons being good at 300 meter range. So this Fulgian Panzer Abwehr looks like it's just trying to sneak forwards to find some recon information, but it's not going to ma matter. After 20 minutes and 31 seconds, Chicken Jew is going to surrender, and that gives the victory to Gonzo. Spectacular performance by Gonzo using that infantry, the combined forces of those infantry to make a lot of ground through that forest. I think just completely caught Chicken Jew off guard. The concentrated push on the bottom side from Chicken Jew was a nice response, but he just didn't take enough territory in the process, and that's kind of where it led him down. So 1,643 points Gonzo was ahead at that point, so not really much coming back from that, especially with the position that Gonzo was in. So commiserations to Chicken Jew is going to be knocked out of his own tournament. Gonzo going to be moving on to the next round of the lower bracket. 1,640 kills to 1,075 losses. In terms of kills, 
You can see this M5A1 actually did a decent job taking out the Marder 2 there. And another M5A1 took out another Marder 2. So those did very well indeed. I thought it was the M4A2 that took the Marder 2, but apparently not. Stuart's doing the job. Those M5A1 Stuarts can be very, very nice indeed. Like if you have like two M5A1s supported by an M3A3, you can do a lot of work with those. And that's a combo I would sort of recommend if you wanted to make some ground early on as a French. But just make sure you have the recon there to spot their AT guns and more to those first, like uh, Chicken Jew demonstrated on that bottom side. As for losses, well, Folsham Panzer Abwehrs, they really pulled their weight. This one took out the M8 Spy in the mid M5A1. There's three half tracks there. On the top side, two WC-52s going down. They also killed off a Pioneer and Voltager squad. HS-129 came in and popped the M16, which basically allowed him to continue to harass the ground forces on that bottom side. His ME-109G6R6 took out three Spitfires. That, that was pretty insane. Losing those Spitfires definitely took away one of... sort of... Chicken Juice counters to Gonzo's airplay. But either way, that's all for now. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.